of you can remember back when you were a kid. What was the one thing almost each and every one of us got scolded for at one time or another from a loved one? Clean your room, throw out the trash, wash the car, clean the yard, wash the dishes. Oh, and we all had our excuses too. I'm busy doing homework. It's Billy's turn to throw out the trash. I can't clean the yard, it's raining. Wash the car, I don't drive. Why, it's just gonna get dirty again. I didn't do it. Kinda made you think. I can't wait to become an adult and do whatever I wanna do, including bossing my kids around. Well, we're all adults now, and yet here we are once again. Clean your workspace, throw out the trash, pick up the loose debris in the yard, clean the company's vehicle, clean the break room. Wow, not much has changed. So why is it when we're at home, everything seems to fit in its own place? Nothing is in the hallway, stairway is clear, trash is thrown out, your vehicle is clean outside and in, you can see outside your windows, clothes are put away, and most important of all, we're all usually safer. Well, thanks to the help of our kids, but a lot has to do with the understanding that housekeeping is essential. Housekeeping plays a major factory in your workplace. Simple housekeeping can save you and your employer money on many levels. It keeps law enforcement agencies such as Labor and Industries and OSHA happy, keeps your work site in a professional standard, and most important of all, it keeps you and your coworkers safe and healthy. This really should be the end of this module, but no. Some of us still believe that it's not our responsibility. Housekeeping is tedious on many levels. Believe me when I say that. I think we have heard all the excuses and at times, they may be our own excuses. Here are some creative responses to some of the common excuses we hear. I don't have time to clean. I have a job to do. Why well, yes, cleaning being one of them. Next, cleaning is not my responsibility. Wrong, it's everybody's responsibility. Next, why clean? It will just get dirty again. Really? Did I just hear that? Nice try, next excuse. Oh, I get paid too much to clean. Oh, that can be solved. Next, we're all adults here. I'm responsible for myself. Well, with that true, pay for your own claim if you get injured. <laughs> By the way, funny, but very illegal. Not my job. You're right, it's everyone's job. I didn't make the mess. Maybe next time you'll stop the individual who is making the mess. Kind of funny how the excuses are still the ones that we used when we were kids. Housekeeping is not a science. It is the ordinary basics. We will review some items that are not only common sense, but it's also the law. What you will learn in this module will allow you to enter back into your work field and know what to look for in order to keep you and your fellow coworkers safe and healthy. Below is a list of rules that must be implemented in your workplace practices. Number one, all places of employment shall be kept clean to the extent that the nature of the work allows. Number two, to facilitate cleaning, every floor, working surface, and passageway shall be kept free from protruding nails, splinters, loose boards, and openings. Number three, cleaning and sweeping shall be performed in such a manner as to minimize the contamination of the air with dust. Number four, in areas where workers may pass or perform duties, all debris and accumulation of material shall be removed. Hoses and electrical conductors across aisles or passageways shall be covered or suspended overhead so that there is no tripping hazards. Number five, where mechanical handling equipment is used, sufficient safe clearances shall be allowed for aisles at loading docks, through doorways, and wherever turns or passages must be made. Such aisles and passageways shall be marked. Number six, storage of materials should not create a hazard. Bags, containers, bundles, construction materials, and other equipment shall be stored in tiers, stacked, blocked, or interlocked. They shall be limited in height so that they are stable and secure against falling, sliding, or collapse. Number seven, free access shall be maintained at times to all exits, fire alarm boxes, fire extinguishing equipment, and any other emergency equipment. Free access means clear of all obstructions. Number eight, working and storage areas shall be kept free from accumulation of materials that pose hazards of tripping, fire, explosion, or pest harborage. Vegetation control shall be exercised. Number nine, all lunchrooms, washrooms, and restrooms shall be kept in a clean and sanitary condition. Garbage cans and lunchrooms and restrooms shall be equipped with fitted covers and contents disposed daily. Number 10, 
During the course of construction, alterations, repair, or demolition of buildings and structures, employers shall ensure continuous cleanup of their work area, including removal of all rubble, scrap, boxes, crates, and excessive material to trash disposal areas. Number 11. Containers shall be provided for the collection and separation of waste, trash, oily or used rags, and other refuse. Containers used for garbage and other oily, flammable, or hazardous waste, such as caustics, acids, harmful dust, or similar materials shall be equipped with covers. Common garbage and other waste shall be disposed of at frequent and regular intervals. Chemical agents or substances which might react to create a hazardous condition shall be stored and disposed of separately. All hazardous waste, which are subject to requirements of Washington Administrative Code 173-303, shall be handled, accumulated, and disposed of in accordance with that chapter. Number 12. All floors and walkways shall be maintained in good condition. Loose and broken components shall be repaired or replaced. Secure footing shall be ensured on all floors and walkways. Lack of proper housekeeping on the job is one safety hazard that is common to all construction projects until after final cleanup. Good housekeeping is one item that can help improve not only the safety on the job, but also the morale and productivity on the job. By performing some of these basic rules, you will be saving not only yourself, but also fellow coworkers from becoming injured. The following general rules should be covered in any discussion on housekeeping. Keep scrap lumber with protruding nails separate from other debris. Bend nails over or remove them from the lumber. Keep all waste debris in neat piles and away from immediate work areas. Remove all debris from the job on a regular basis. Keep aisles, stairways, and walkways clear. Store materials only in their designated areas. Place trash barrels where needed to eliminate food rubbish. Keep tools and equipment stored neatly. Keep extension cords from being across walkways. If necessary, run them overhead same applies to air compressor hoses. Don't let trash and debris build up. If it does, make an extra effort to get it cleaned up. By performing some of these good housekeeping habits, you prevent minor injuries like cuts, punctures, and slivers. You also prevent major accidents like slips, falls, and fires. It increases job productivity by speeding up the movement of workers and materials on the job, and once again, it keeps compliance inspectors from visiting the job. One area that is usually bypassed are the trash chutes. Trash chutes, also called disposal chutes, are commonly used by remodelers and roofers to keep their job sites cleaner and safer. The following are some basic general information to abide by. Once again, be sure to check with your state regulations for any additional or more strict guidelines you must follow. No material shall be dropped to any point lying outside the exterior walls of the structure unless the area is effectively protected. Whenever materials are to be dropped in an unprotected area, an enclosed chute will be used. The chute will be fully enclosed on all sides. Never allow someone using a chute to be subjected to materials falling from above. Be sure the chute door can be securely latched in a closed position. Be sure all debris is collected into a suitable container, for example, trash barrels or the back of a dump truck. Never allow debris to fall into an unguarded or unsecured area. Never allow debris to accumulate to the point to overflow. Keep a fire extinguisher near the trash accumulation area. Never put solvent, oil, flammable liquids, or materials soaked with any flammable liquids into a trash chute. Be sure the chute is properly guarded with standard guard rolls. If it is attached to a wall opening, standard guard rolls, a safety net system, or personal fall arrest system, a PFAS, must be used. It is important to remember, the use of trash chutes can greatly improve the housekeeping of any construction project. But unless the chutes are properly constructed and used, they will do nothing but create additional hazards for the workers. Be conscious of what you are doing around the chute. Material storage. Proper material storage is a vital part to every construction and to a good site housekeeping. This is especially true with finished hardware since it can take so long to receive the materials from the supplier after the order is placed. It also makes good sense since materials have to be stacked and placed properly to do it so you can actually access them materials easily and safely. Poorly stacked materials are dangerous to anyone around the job site. Remember, 
Keep aisles and passageways clear. Never store materials in such a way as to block either one of them. Never store materials within six feet of a hoistway entrance, floor opening, or at second floors or higher. Segregate incompatible materials. Don't stack flammables next to combustibles. Remove all nails from lumber stacks. Block all cylindrical storage areas to prevent spreading or tilting. When possible, cross tie tiers of material to increase support. If heavy materials or large quantities of materials are to be stored on floors above grade, know the load limits of the floor and don't exceed them. Remember, one way to increase efficiency and safety on the job is to store materials correctly the first time. It just makes good sense. For material handling, remember there is a place for everything and everything needs to be in its place. The proper storage of work materials will make your job easier. Proper lifting and handling will help if needed. We'll keep you and your coworkers from being injured. Here are some guidelines that will help you with material storage. Ensure that floors can handle the storage loads. Keep materials six feet away from open floors or landings, 10 feet away from the exterior of the building. Keep all aisles and passageways clear. Do not store non-compatible materials together. For example, gas container and bulk lumber do not mix. Ever hear of a soup sandwich? Yeah, me neither. Again, makes no sense, don't do it. Good housekeeping is important in preventing injuries caused by trips, slips, and falls on slippery walkways or cluttered walking and working surfaces. Poor housekeeping can block exits and access to emergency equipment. Failure to remove trash and other debris increases the risk of fire. It did not take us long as kids to realize that if we put everything in its correct spot once it was used with, it would save us a lot of time and also a whole lot of pain. Pain you ask? Yeah, pain. From the punishment you receive from your loved ones for not keeping your room clean or doing your part to keep the house presentable. Same thing goes for work. If your employer is anything like mine, the only pain your employer will give you is a pain you will feel in your wallet if you catch my drift. Remember, good housekeeping aids everyone and makes it easier for everyone to do their job safely and with more pride. We hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you and be safe.